Hello again, folks. Today we're in the seventh chapter of Matthew's Gospel. And with this chapter, we bring the world-famous Sermon on the Mount to a close. And yet again, this chapter is just brimming at the seams with content. Jesus is teaching his disciples what life in the kingdom ought to be like. And he's explaining to them what is expected of his followers. So their words, their actions, their thoughts, even the attitudes and motives of our hearts are to come under the lordship of Christ. Being a Christian is holistic. The Jewish leaders who put so much emphasis on towing the line, on keeping the law and pleasing God with religion. Well, that kind of thing doesn't cut it in the kingdom. Jesus explains it's all about the heart. And so here in this chapter, Jesus challenges first our relationships with others. He says, don't be judgmental. Don't be hypocritical. And this is so important and relevant for today, isn't it? It's easy to judge others. It's easy to determine what's right and wrong when we're not involved. But the sad truth is we all have weakness. We all have shortcomings. I have seen people criticise and condemn others for the very mistakes they themselves have made or are making. And Jesus says, change your attitude. Look to yourself. Work on your issues and your shortcomings and then maybe challenge others about theirs. But of course, this requires humility, a person who recognises their own weakness and frailty, a person who is gentle, patient, kind, a person who is genuinely concerned about the righteousness of themselves and their friends. Verses 7 to 11 then warn us to keep close connection with our Father in prayer. In our weakness, in our longing and our desperation for help, Jesus says we have a God who is listening and whose door is always open so to speak we can ask we can seek we can knock and the lord responds and he's not in the business of being nasty or inconsiderate if we ask for bread something healthy something good for nourishment he's not going to play tricks on us and give us a snake instead instead something harmful that can bite this is a, a god of grace a god of love a god of compassion but there's also a challenge here there are implications from jesus's words Firstly, the person doing the asking, the seeking, the knocking is a disciple, a citizen of the kingdom or a follower of Christ who has made Jesus Lord of their lives. Secondly, there's persistence required. There is continuous asking, seeking, knocking. And thirdly, God may not answer in the way we expect, but it will definitely be for our good. That's crucial but a difficult lesson to learn. Jesus <clears throat> then finishes this section in verse 12 by saying, do to others what you would have them do to you. And that's a huge challenge. And it's right into the face of what the world today promotes. Our society celebrates those who rise to the very top and it doesn't really matter how they get there. It doesn't matter how they treat the so-called little people along the way. But Jesus says, absolutely not. And bear in mind, he's not just simply saying, don't do bad things to others. No, he's saying something much more difficult to follow. He's saying, do good to others. So go out of your way to help people and serve people. This is self-sacrificial love that he's talking about here. And Jesus then rounds off the chapter and really the entire sermon with one or two warnings. Firstly, we must enter the kingdom through the narrow gate. So the gate to the road of destruction is wide, but the gate to the kingdom is narrow. That is to say there's no room for baggage, no room for pride or self-reliance or legalism. It's about surrendering ourselves to God. It's about depending on his grace and the salvation that comes only through Christ. Secondly, we must watch out for false prophets and we can recognise them. Jesus says it's people who talk a good game, but their actions give them away. They maybe say all the right things, even professing to be the Lord's, but their deeds lack any display of grace, love, mercy. We ought to be on guard against the teachings of those who might lead us astray. The sad reality is some people who call themselves Christians have absolutely no room for the Lord in their lives. Their hearts are hard and they would much rather chase their own glory than surrender to the will of the Father. In the end, Jesus says to them, I never knew you. And finally, Jesus warns, if you hear all this teaching of his and you take it to heart and you ponder it and you open yourself up to God and build your life on Christ and commit to serving him in his kingdom, 
then you will have a sure foundation. And even as the storms of life and the temptations of the devil come in, our house will stand. But if you ignore the teaching, <clears throat> if you spurn Christ, if you reject him, if you do not obey and you choose another religion or philosophy in an attempt to find God or please him, then you will fall flat on your face. Jesus makes it clear here there is no pluralism in the kingdom. It's one or the other. There's only one way to the Father and it must be through the Son. What a sermon this is from our Saviour. That's us for today, folks. Join us tomorrow for chapter 8. Until then, God bless.